Hey, <laughs> it's a holy day! Hey, welcome to DSR, I'm Zoe and today I am riding the Harley Davidson Sport Glide. As you can see, I've got Matt in tow with me. He is on the breakout today. <laughs> oh, this is the only glide I trust myself on. These things are big. They make me nervous. No, no, don't be nervous, don't be nervous. Straight away, I am comfortable. Can I reach the pegs? Oh my gosh, I don't even think about this. Yeah, can I reach the pegs? Yes. Yes, five foot five, I am. There you go, switching on, switching on. Oh, yes. Feeling that V-twin between my legs. <laughs> oh man, I love this bike already. In my very limited experience of riding Harleys, which is a couple of times when Matt owned the Fat Bob, jumping on a Harley after riding any other bike just feels like a completely different experience. It's like learning how to ride again. I think any bike where your feet are at the front just feels like a completely different experience. <laughs> oh man, it's nothing like it. On paper, this is the Harley Davidson I would own. I've become a little bit obsessed ever since I sat on one at MCN last year. For me, it's the perfect mix between the naked cruising, kind of your little commute, your Sunday ride, with you know, the bigger baggers and their capability to do some touring. This sits nicely in the middle. You've got the bags. You've got a bit of protection from the front fairing. And the great thing is, it's so interchangeable. You can take this off and you can just have a naked cruiser. You can take the bags off, obviously. Really depends on how you want to style it. It's a versatile bike. Already, I can tell... <laughs> I'm much more comfortable riding this than I was Matt's Fat Bob. Now it's a 2018 Fat Bob, so I appreciate there might be some updates, but as with Harley, they're never, they're never too significant. When I was riding the Fat Bob, I found the steering so heavy. I didn't particularly feel agile. I'd get to a roundabout or just a, a turning, and I'd panic a little bit, if I'm honest. It didn't seem to turn as I would expect so far on this butte no dramas it's living up to everything that i've read on paper about it it is it's so much more agile the sport guide has the milwaukee 8 107 engine the v twin grunt you can feel it rumbling oh Man, I love Harley life. So as I come to a stop, you see I can feel that V-twin rumbling. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Very nice. I'm comfortable on it, obviously. You know. They're low bikes, low ground clearance. But they are big bikes. You know? This is over 300 kilograms and weight that can be quite daunting to a little shorty like me at five foot five but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel intimidating once you once you pull off i was a little bit nervous to begin with i'll give you that i guess just one of them things the unknown i know they'll be surprised that our harley harley ride i gave them with a nod Back to how I feel on it as a as a five foot five rider, short ass legs. I can comfortably get both feet on the ground. They're not flat, which when you consider the seat height is only 690 mil, I think. I'll double check and put it on the screen. Uh, you know, that just shows you how wide it is, but the seat is wide and made for comfort, so I can't really complain. 
but I can get both feet down. When I put my feet up into the, the riding position, onto the pegs, my right leg does get caught, does get caught on the side. Suction, just a bit of the engine sticking out. I'll have a little walk around when we get off. But it doesn't make it the easiest because it sits right on my knee. So, it's not very comfortable if I'm honest. Left hand side, not a problem at all. As I said, this seat is very comfortable. I could ride this all day long. The handlebars nice and wide. Make that handling even better. But they're at a comfortable distance. I should just place my arms out and they're there. Riding in this world all alone. Yeah, quick little break off the bike. And it is, it's the air filter that I can see, not the engine. Would make sense, here's a V-twin where it's positioned, but it's the air filter that I keep knocking into and kind of pushes my foot out wide, which kind of makes me slip off that brake pedal. But Matt's just said, which is probably right, you could probably get an extender for this and I'd, I'd be all right with it. Just jumping back on it here. I do realise I have to kind of shift my weight forward onto the seat. I'm not. And that's just to be able to reach the, reach the pedals. Shut it. Um, hey, one of them things. It's a real joy to ride. Just pooling around some industrial back roads. And I'm smiling. We will pull over shortly and have a proper, proper look around. Because if you're buying a Harley, it's probably because you think they look awesome. And this one is certainly no exception. The starting price at 18 one. It's obviously no chump change, but when you compare it to some of the other Harleys, you're kind of sitting in the middle. It is another 500 pounds for certain color schemes. So, kind of two black variations there's the grey and then there's a sand coloured as well personally I think Harleys look awesome and just fully blacked out I really liked on Matt's Fat Bob when he had the Vance and Hines slip on and they were kind of black and a little bit of chrome I think they look awesome as you'd expect with any Harley that has been out for a little while there is a whole catalogue of extras that you can get get for this bike that would be a whole video series in itself just trying to get through them to me you buy a Harley and you can just add over time it's like a long-term project but not a dusty garage project it's a I can go out and ride this whenever I want but when I'm looking for something a little bit different I've got a bit of chair, spare, spare change spare change you can whack it on and oh the thrills will just keep coming all right guys a bit used to, i have to get used to having indicators on each side <laughs> the gear changes themselves are, are clunky but i don't think that's unusual but there's a satisfaction in the clunkiness i don't know if that quite describes how I'm feeling when I change gear. The gears are fairly forgiving, I would say. Quite easy coming up and down. But they're a definitive, it's a definitive clunk. And I like that. As you'd expect with this engine capacity, when you need to go, you can just get on that throttle and go. Power-wise, at about 84 brake horse. It seems obviously fairly modest, but that transpires very differently when you're on it. Oh, you just, just resonates through your body. So far, the bike is living up to all paper expectations. I think that's fair to say. 
if I had £18,000 lying around, I don't, then this would be in the garage. And well, if I had £18,000 hanging around, then I'd probably have a garage I could fit it in as well. <laughs> Cows are sitting down, that's not a good sign. Lived in Somerset long enough to know that. Stay away! As good as this is and as capable as this bike is, especially for its all-rounder ability, don't know if I'd really want to be caught in the rain on it. It drops in very nicely around the corners. Obviously you can't go too far. That like ground clearance isn't a huge amount. It's only like 120 mil. But as proved there, you can certainly enjoy the the country roads. Oh, yes. Indicators. I always want to go on the left. a little bit there oh well only my ego hurt it's a problem when you come to a start it is a bit of a bigger bike on that when there's just this slight incline I felt that 300 plus kilograms of weight it's okay that I can get my feet on the ground but it's a bike that flows not really one that you want to start and stop would be my my opinion again as a shorter rider Equally as I've ridden it for a little bit longer, I am getting a slight ache in my arms. That could have just been because we hit the gym the other day. There's me talking about not wanting to stop and start. And that's like camera change. I reckon a little, it is, it's a little Japanese cap. Fuck me. My overheat's in here, can't get up! Right, we'll stop here and we'll manoeuvre off the bike. So we just had a little break but before we pull off I thought I'd show you around. Personally, I think she's gorgeous. As I've said, this is the sort of Harley that I I would want to ride. On paper, it was definitely the bike for me. Having ridden it, I wholeheartedly agree. I've really enjoyed riding it. It is set up for a little bit of light touring. This screen is fully detachable if you wanted the naked look instead. So are the rear bags. The saddlebags have loads of room. Just simply lift up that clasp, they open up. You can also lock it for extra security too. I have just double checked on the colour options for the bike and they've removed that sand coloured one for this year. So it just comes in the black or the vivid black. I can't quite tell the difference. Uh, or the metallic, the silver, the silver option. Whilst we're here, might as well do a quick sound check. It's just everything you want from a Harley. There's not a huge amount of tech to talk about on the bike. Obviously there's extras, but as I said, that's a full catalogue's worth. The thing about the Harleys is how they ride. I've got a little bit longer with this bike, so I'm gonna go out and enjoy it. We have got some 
pillion pegs. I'm not sure I'd want to be on, on the back, but they tuck nicely away. I like that they've got the Harley sign on this side once they're tucked away, so they're not they're not, not aesthetically pleasing. Unesthetically pleasing? I don't know. That's pretty cool. Oh, jeez. There you go. Sat on the bike. <clears throat> Bike's parts. The GoPro won't show it, but we are on a bit of a slump. You feel that 317 kilograms. Just pulled over while map faffs about. The controls are really easy, really easy to use regardless of what kind of gloves you've got on. They're nice and clear, you get a good firm response from putting the indicators on and off. I think it's funny I have to pull myself forward when we get going. I can't quite reach the pedals. A simple little dash but in keeping with the style of the bike you have actually got a little button here where you can scroll through mileage etc really easy to use and you've got the time there you've got gear indicator which I always like to see and you've also got a fuel gauge on the side this bike does come with cruise control as I said, you just feel the quality with Harley. Yes, 18 grand is a lot to spend on a bike. I'd say it's money well spent though. If I could, I'd definitely buy this bike. I love the handling. I love when you get going, you can't feel that weight at all. It drops into corners nicely. You feel great because it's a Harley. The work is quality, there's no cheap bits of plastic hanging off, switch gears, they're good, you get a good feedback from them. It's just the way it makes you feel, isn't it? It's comfortable. I've not really spoken about the brakes and the suspension. I'd read that the brakes weren't quite as responsive as some of the other models. I've had no problem with that today. The rear brake in particular is actually like very responsive. Suspension's excellent. All in all, I think this is an awesome all-rounder bike. I love that you can take the fairing off if you so choose. Personally, I think it looks great with it on. A huge thank you to riders today for letting us borrow both of these bikes. If you've enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy Matt's review of the breakout as well. If you could, thumbs up would be brilliant subscribe to the channel hit the notifications bell and you won't miss out on any of our content thanks so much for watching and in the meantime ride safe <laughs>